today's video, we're going to look at all three of the variation of the attacks. That is the, the paired form for sword, sword and dagger, and sword and cloak. I'm only going to show the patient side in this video because that's really the only uh, clear instructions he gives us, although we can extrapolate the agent's part uh, by what they're attacking with. But for today, I'm going to show the patient's part first uh, piece by piece, and then as a whole, one continuous uh, sequence of actions. So I will be turning around quite a bit. So to start, we are in Colonel Stretta. The attack we're dealing with is a mandrito to the head, any kind. We're going to go to Faccia, make contact, step towards the right, step behind, and step back with a burrito. So now I'm going to recenter so you can see the next part, nice and straight on. An imbrocata is coming down to our chest. So we're going to step to their left, feet, slice a tongo to the face, and step around, coming back to Corlunga Strata. So from Corlunga Strata, the next attack is in Mandrito to the inside of our right leg. We're going to beat the false edge, cut the head, and do it again, ending up in Portifero Strata. Now our next attack we're dealing with is a Rivero so to the high outside. We're going to beat by stepping to the side, come up, thrust, and come down to Portivero Alta. So the high extended version of this guard. So it's not down here, it's up here, but not so high that I have to go to high guard. So staying in Portifero Alta, coming in with the Stoccata to our outside, we're going to turn our palm down, go into entry, thrust to the chest, and step back to Cinghiale. From Cinghiale, he says there if they can throw anything, Mandrito, Rivaroso, thrust, but if we are doing this correctly, they should be to our right, so a Rivaroso or a thrust will make more sense. So if any of those things, we're going to beat it with the true edge, Thrust and cut all the way down to Porta di Ferro Larga. Punta Reza, we're going to use the false edge. Mandrito, swim from behind so they stab themselves and step back with a reverso, so ending up the Colombo Alto. And then finally, as they come in to finish us with a Fenante, we're going to step in in headguard, seizing their wrist and cutting to the head or cutting the leg, finishing in Corona Strata. So now one full time through. Corona Strata, defend with Faccia, against the Madrito, against the Brocata, beat, tongue to the face, Urigas Sonino, against the Madrito to the inside leg, pick up the false edge, Cut of head, defend, cut of head, defend against the reverso, beat true edge, come up, imbrocata, relax into portifero strata, against the, sorry, portifero alto, against the stoccata, go to entry, step back to chiniale, against any attack to the right, beat, thrust, come all the way down to larga, False, uh, punto diversa, matrito fondo, step back, and step in against the fendente, and strike head, or strike leg, and finish, and go look So one more time, no stopping. So that is the first uh, variation of the attacks. Uh, when we pick up the dagger, we have a slightly more complex se sequence of actions because we are dealing with the provo provocation and the actual attack in every single action here. So it's fewer total guard positions, there is more actual actions, uh, a total of 12 versus uh, nine in the last one. 
So we're gonna work it through bit by bit and I'll put it all together in one continuous uh, sequence. So starting with the strata, we're going to deal with a punta reversa to our face. So we're going to use the false edge to invite them to strike our right leg. As they do that, step back to Chingyale. So here in Chingyale, they come with a stoccata to our outside. We're going to transition to entry. They have come around to strike to our left side of the head with a madrito. We'll use facha and then recover down to iron gate. They're going to give us the look of a reverse to the high line, so we're going to raise our hand again. But instead, they're going to cut to our legs, so as we feel no blade, that's our cue to step back to Kodavonga Alta. Now, here we have two possibilities that can either throw a mandrito to our head or to our leg. Uh, I'll show both, but, I'll do, but the continuous version I'll show with the, the leg attack is a little bit. Um, it flows really nice. So if we are in Kodok Alta and they come in with a mandrito to the head, we're going to come in and defend, striking with the stoccata, and then coming up to Alicorno with the right forward. If instead we go to the leg with that attack, we're going to do a similar action, except we're going to top cover low and cut high or cut low, swim the foot behind, and come up to Unicorn. So here we are in the right Unicorn. They are going to give us a punta in falso, so it's got a snap and cut over top to thrust in brocata. So we're going to bring the dagger up to make sure they don't hit us, and as they come with the attack to the leg, we step back and hit the inside of their arm, and come up to left Amicorno, and then whatever they do, whatever kind of attack it is, but probably a mandrito or a or thrust of some kind, we are going to step to their side, deal with, deal with it using our dagger, and then strike with an imbrocata to their chest. So Carlos Olvidi, we're gonna pick it up, strike at the same time, and then get out however we see fit. So, uh, I'll give this in numbers. So, one, So that's sword and dagger. Now let's finally look at sword and cloak. <coughs> this I would say is probably the tightest of all three of these uh, sequences. And that we're not, going to, we're, not going, we're not going to be moving a lot. Not nearly as much as we moved in the first case, for example. So we're going to start in Kunum Mistrata, but the sequence of guards can be a little bit different. So we start in Kunum Mistrata, and we're dealing with a two punta reversa, one to the face, and then one to our chest. So to set this up, we're going to use the false edge to defend against the first one. As they come to in between the weapons, we're going to guide them to our right, using the outside slip, and striking to the head. This will bring us to Kodilonga Alta. A stoccata is going to come to our face next, so we're going to get this in the way to try to deflect it to our outside, which will cause them to strike to our leg. So we're simply going to step back and strike the offending arm, bringing us to Iron Gate. Now they're going to feint a punta reversa so they can throw a reversa to our leg. So we're going to get that little foot out of there 
And then as they come in with that attack, you're going to step back, throwing a stramazone, ending up in shinyale. Now this next part is a little bit is, is interesting, and uh, we don't see this anywhere else in the manuscript, but the idea is that we're going to, as the agent, make it look like we're going to throw this attack to elicit some sort of defense from them, presumably test up, maybe a fudge like action. But we're going to do this, and then turn it into an imbrocata instead. So as the person on the receiving end, we're going to go up to test up, which but to keep our cloak where it is, because the attack actually hasn't come yet. To come here, and then as they come with that imbrocata to the, to the outside, we're going to guide it cloak and step up or come up to the unicorn on the left with a ridopio. Now while we're in this position, the tag is going to be a madrito to the highland, so head, shoulder, whatever. We're going to use a cloak to defend this. So we're going to step in, thrust, bring it through, and come back up to the unicorn with a right forward. And the attack is going to be either a thrust or a malbrito tomb, it depends. We're going to step into that and strike to the inside of the thigh with a malbrito tondo. So in sequence, we have one, two, three, four, back eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then finally, one more time, just movement alone. There's our three version of the attacks. Uh, as he says, this is a possibility. We could create, in theory, an infinite number of these uh, sequences of actions. But these three that he shows us gives us a very good idea of how the guards, the cuts, the thrusts interact with one another, how you could possibly chain them together to make something resembling fencing. So uh, next week we'll look at a, the part on tempo, which is kind of the final piece that we uh, have yet to look at.